So, okay. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our tourist contract. We're gonna collect three different things together. So, to fly a tourist to space, we need a command capsule. The problem is the tourist cannot be a pilot. Good thing is we have this Staputnik probe. The probe can actually control the spacecraft. So that will be useful. And on top of this, we're going to put some other bits and pieces. Let's put a science experiment on here because it's useful to take science to space. We need to collect it. We're going to put a couple of thermometers on the side. That's great. And I'm going to put an engine on this because I want to make sure that we have enough thrust to get ourselves to orbit. So that will be the smallest engine that we can fit. These are the parts that we're supposed to test, but we're not going to we're not going to test them on this on this flight. Okay, for landing we need parachutes. Here we go, parachutes, and we're going to stick a couple up the top here. Those will make sure that we actually land in the correct direction. And that will be our main vehicle. I'm just checking the center of mass, and those are above the center of mass, so we will land on the engine here just fine. And in the real world, you probably don't want to land directly on an engine, but this is Kerbal Space Program. You can, in fact, get away with that. So now, to boost this up, we are going to have the back thumper. The back thumper is hitting you on the back or something, right? Oh yeah, let's fix my staging down here. I noticed this engine. We do not want that engine to fire at the same time as the parachute. So that will... that will probably get us a good way towards space, but this has to be moving at 100 meters per second before we can actually perform the test. So let's stick a couple of smaller solid rocket boosters on the side here. And since we're going to ditch these things and we're going to be doing them at low speed, I don't think we need to worry too much about aerodynamics. So I'm just going to put my RT-10 hammers on the side here. There we go. And... Oh yeah, let's let's make this thing super easy to steer. So I'm going to put on some fins just to keep the thing pointing straight up and down. That is good. So we have these engines and we need this one to fire beforehand, right? So this one's going to go here. So this we fire gets up to speed, then this fires. Okay, that's great. Now we need to replace the crew. We have Jebediah Kerman in here. He's not going to fly. Filney Kerman is. Filney Kerman is our tourist. So this will control it. And I just want to kind of point out this here. This is a tourist contract. It gives you a crew member who has to occupy a capsule, but they cannot control the spacecraft. Probe bodies are things that control spacecraft, and they don't need crew. They do need electrical power, but there's a bit of electrical power on this spacecraft if you... Uh, I'm not sure where you see this, but you can you can find out how much we have. Okay, so we're getting ready to go. Throttle to 100%, not that it matters right now. Uh, stability control is unavailable because Filney Kerman is there, ready to go. Let's bring up our contracts. The contract, remember, to test this has to be at a certain speed and altitude. So we have the correct altitude, we don't have the correct speed. We will get that soon enough. Before this, let's go into the map and click down the bottom to bring up the nav ball. We want to make sure we're going to fly part of this from the map so we get the correct altitude. And we need to be able to see what we're doing when this is happening. So ready, and off we go, firing those solid rocket boosters. Wait for this to turn green. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it there. And now we can start testing that main engine. And so now we have completed that contract. That's great. So we're about to run out of fuel here, so ditch those. Just hitting the space bar. We are not steering at this time. It will become necessary to steer once we ditch this last stage because this thing will probably want to fall around and move one way or another. But hopefully this will carry us high enough that we don't need to worry about the engines. Okay, how are we doing right now? We are going to 52 kilometers. So I'm just going to wait a few seconds. We're going to use these fins to keep us stable. And now we're about 20 kilometers. Let's go for it. So there, that's us stable. I'm not touching the steering controls, but you can see that it does want to wobble a little. Let's go to the map and try to watch this. So we're wanting to get more than 70 kilometers up. That's all, 70 kilometers, that's us, we've done it. Now we just need to wait for us to get to space. 
So the two contracts we have is one for the tourist. Oh yeah, we have some science that we can do. We've already collected material science from space. We're going to collect material science from the upper atmosphere. That's 22 science there. Keep that. Uh, have we got upper atmosphere thermal science? No, we don't need that. Reset. So yeah, let's time accelerate until we're out of the atmosphere. We're spinning this around for the enjoyment of Philney Kerman. They wanted the ride of their lives. They've got it. They don't unfortunately have the best view of things. So we have a contract here to collect science over Kerbin. Kerbin, where is it? Fly by the moon. Collect science data. Transmit and recover. So I'm going to log that temperature. It doesn't give us any actual science data because we've already got it, but that is enough to fulfill the contract. We just have to bring it back. Now we're falling back down. I'm just going to let this thing start to kick in and fall towards the planet. Hopefully we will balance out just a bit. There it goes. And so we're, we've fallen into this kind of you know, engine down situation. We can throttle our engine if we like to perhaps slow our descent, make sure that we don't burn up too quickly. I'll reduce our velocity just a touch. That will help us survive. I think I think we're fine here. We're going Mach 2. If we can't handle Mach 2, what can we handle? We're falling down. We're going to wait until we're below 15 or so. Well, we're going to wait until our velocity is below, like, 400 meters per second before we deploy our parachutes. There we go. Parachutes deployed. Slowing us down. Can we collect anything useful here? Nope. Nope. Not good. So just let this thing fall down to the surface all in its own. And we've completed this contract. We've completed three contracts here. And hopefully we will have made a bunch of money doing this. Fulney Kerman will come back and tell all his friends about how much fun he had in his tiny little capsule with this amazing view of the world. Yes. Note the parish note the shadow. Very useful thing to see is to see where the shadow is. I'm as I get down, I'm just gonna apply a small amount of engine power to try to make sure we don't land too fast. Yeah, you can see the shadow here, just throttle up a little. Just bring my speed down below about 6 meters per second. We get tons of fuel. We'd prefer to not break the engine. And... Bump. Excellent. Have we got temperature data? Oh, look! We haven't got temperature data from the grasslands. That will be good science to take back. There, look, we get more funds. We get 319,000. We get tons of science and awesome contracts. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And we get 44 sites just short of what we need to unlock. Oh, no, we just... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and that's all this. And Philney Kerman. Ton of reputation as well. And now we have to do the other experiments that we arranged to do. Okay, so we need to build an aircraft which will get us to altitude. We already have this simple plane sitting around. It's very similar to what we used in the uh, previous plane mission. I'm going to make some changes to it because what I want to do is have an extra rocket engine sitting on top to help us at the high altitudes. So there we go. I'm going to put these down here, rotate them around, then press X. There we go. So I'm going to move my uh, air intake forward just a touch here. And the three parts we want to test, two of them are structural. So we have this stack separator. And the problem with this is it needs to be mounted in line and there's no place to mount it in line, right? Uh, the radial decoupler is easy because it mounts on the side. So I'm going to put this right at the back. We're going to mount something on that. And I think what I'm going to mount on here is something that can also take this uh, little stack separator. The other item we need is a radial mount parachute. So we're going to put these roughly where the middle is. Uh, I'm guessing that'll be good. Let's just take a look. Centre of mass. Uh, that's close enough. Maybe move those forward just a touch. There, okay. So, I need to get up to 14,000 metres. This jet engine is not up for the task. So instead, I'm going to use a little rocket engine. That is my uh, cunning plan here. 
So we're going to mount a rocket engine up top and that's going to provide extra thrust for this. Now the only problem is if you mount a rocket engine up there then it's going to be... Well, it's going to lift, it's going to drop the back of the plane down, you're going to have control issues. But I think we can handle this. Let's just put a nose cone on the front here. Ah, you know, now I'm thinking about it, maybe I could put some wings on this or something. It, it doesn't matter, this thing is going to get jettisoned. Now, when this fires, its thrust is going to go forwards this way and the whole aircraft is going to want to pitch nose down because the center of mass is down here. There is a way to fix this. So what I'm going to do is just take off the engine temporarily and then I'm going to take use these two translation controls. There's a translation and a rotation control. So I'm going to pick this, grab my engine, and what it lets me do is drag things down till they're closer. Then I can pick the rotation and rotate it so it points downwards, closer to where we want it. So you can see the center of thrust is this purple line, right? Turn it on down here, you've got the center of mass turned on. You want this to point roughly down the middle. So I'm going to uh, adjust this. If, if you click on this here, the angle snap, that gives you smoother control. So let's, uh, let's actually lift this up a little. We don't want it knocking straight into the object. Okay. And another little rotation here. Just try to get it as close as possible. That's going to work pretty well. Okay. There we go. Now we just need to attach this engine again. And we have all the stuff in one place that we're going to need for testing. Whether we'll be able to test this successfully is a major question. I'm not I'm not really 100% sure this will work, but that's half the fun. I certainly don't recommend that anybody tries building anything like this. This is largely so uh, I can demonstrate this, right? Demonstrate the difficulty of performing some of these things. Oh yeah, what we need lastly, yes, completely forgot, stack separator on the back. We're going to ditch this uh, at the appropriate altitude. Okay, we've got enough fuel in here. We need fuel and oxidizer, and these things doesn't matter too much. Uh, what is the mass of this thing? It says it masses 8.1 tons, so if I add some extra thrust here, that should give us... I think this will work. I think this will get us up to altitude, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the amount of liquid fuel in the rear of the aircraft, right? Because I think we just... I think we'll be fine. If I cut the amount of fuel, we'll have more ability to fly further. And finally, let's pick a crew member. Uh, yeah, we could do Jebediah. Let's do Valentina. It doesn't really matter, but let's do this. Valentina is ready to go. Okay, so once again, enable the brakes. And uh, we're going to throttle up. now. You may not know this, but you can activate parts by right-clicking on them. And in this case, you can activate the engine by right-clicking and activating the engine. That avoids you having to worry about the stage uh, staging operations. Take the brakes off, enable stability control, and we run off down the runway, and Valentina is making history. We're going to fly to altitudes unheard of in a test plane. Of course, to do that, she'll need to use a unique combination of design, technology, and sheer grit. Okay, so first of all, our first experiment is at 8,000 meters, I believe. Uh, and to get there, we're pretty much just going to fly upwards. Now, I'm using time acceleration here. You can use the stability control with the time acceleration. Flying with time acceleration on can be very, very hard, and it can be an incredibly twitchy experience. Also, if you have your stability control on and you use too much time acceleration, you can find that your aircraft uh, just doesn't want to hold attitude, it doesn't want to stay still. So, you know, just some warnings there. If you find that as you do higher levels of time acceleration, the aircraft's nose wants to dip down, then cancel your time acceleration. If anything starts to go wrong, cancel time acceleration using the, the comma key as quickly as possible. And anyway, we've reached 8,000 8, meters. We're going to turn around, get ourselves flying back this way because, well, why not? Ditch that part. You have been sacrificed for science. 
I'm sure you will be very proud of the science we have gained as you fall back to the ocean. Okay, so now we are going up. There's two, the two sets of experiments we have have an altitude range of, of or floor of 10,000 meters and 14,000 meters. This jet engine will probably not get us to 14,000 meters. It will fail before then simply because it runs out of oxygen and the jet engines aren't designed for that. The turbojets work at higher altitudes. But uh, you see, if you see this, yeah, my thrust is dropping down. But that's why we brought that rocket engine up. So we're gonna, we're putting this velocity vector, we're putting the nose down, so that we're gaining altitude, not too quickly, not too slowly. We're just be going as carefully as possible, because that way we'll get as high as possible before we even fire this engine. Once that engine fires, we have two goals. We have to get above 200 meters per second. And we also have to get, or sorry, we have to get our velocity above 200 meters per second, but we also have to make sure that our altitude will rise above 14,000 so that we can do the parachute test. So if we go too steep, then we won't have the acceleration. And if we stay too shallow, we certainly won't get the altitude. So this uh, requires a bit of judgment. I, I do not advise that anyone watching this try to replicate this necessarily as their first go. I'm trying to sh give you an idea of how complicated things can be and how you can use, uh, you know, build techniques to actually do things like this. But ready, I think we're ready to go. Fire this and immediately pitch up. You don't want that rocket engine firing downwards, whatever you do. So, pitching that nose. All right, we're picking up the speed. We've got to get the speed first. We've got our altitude rising. We have 1,100 meters to go. We're at almost or 190 no oh, no 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 190 is 10 meters per second to go gotta watch that fuel the whole way 200 meters per second okay so as long as i detach this uh, part i will successfully complete this experiment but now 30 14 000 we're now at parachute test altitude so i'm just gonna level level this out ditch it we have sacrificed you to science as well and while I'm between 14,000 and 15,000, deploy the chutes. And that's that. That's three different part test experiments in the same mission. We had to combine uh, building techniques that showed the translation and rotation. You showed how to point a rocket engine through the center of mass so that your aircraft didn't flip out of control. We showed that... Uh, Regular jet engines aren't really good for altitude. There's a lot of stuff going on here that uh, maybe you didn't know or maybe it is new to you. Anyway, we're on the way down. And there goes that rocket in a blaze of glory. Now that he is gone, we can reveal that we really just wanted to see that explosion. The whole sacrificing for science, that was just a ruse to make him feel good. So we're waiting, we're getting down about 500 meters, these parachutes will deploy. Great. Now, we still have reaction wheels in the nose of this aircraft, and we're going to use that to make sure that we kind of flatten out our, our landing orientation. Perhaps I shouldn't have put all the fuel at the front of the aircraft. I have not yet unlocked the ability to pump fuel around. So uh, normally I would just pump fuel to the back there to balance it out, but uh, no, I forgot to do that. So holding S, pull the nose up, pull the nose up, and... Touchdown! Touchdown with science! Oh, rolling backwards there. And that's us. Recover the vessel. So that should give us a little more money to help our campaign. There are 394,000. We get a little bit of science. Anyway, I think we need to return to space. We need to collect some data from new sections of space we have not been to. So that'll be the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.